Um, I'm so thrilled to be here with Wayne and Pascal doing this tonight. I thought I was going to have to do something alone, but it's so much fun to be here with two poets and then to, for them to be such great poets as Wayne and Pascal as an added bonus. Um, I might do, do a Wayne and just read them all the way through, but I also might give you some facts about Veronica Lake, who's on the cover and who I don't have any problems about. Bleach. I liked the blonde, but it was too powerful. I had to grow it out. My head was a hot white coal in the night. Men loved me too much. They followed me on foot or in their slick cars at a slow pace saying nothing. I could hear the slow grind of their wheels or their heavy footsteps out of tune with the timbre of my stilettos. I wasn't wearing stilettos, but I think you will imagine that I was. When I picked up one of those shoes in Topshop, my mother said, you'll break your ankle. And I did not believe her. She said, you'll come unstuck. And I did. These days, I keep my feet firmly laced to the earth in trainers. I'm always ready to run. Carrie. Have you ever seen a woman in a plastic tiara throw up? I have been her, dressed up as Carrie. Straight men and dogs were licking the fake blood from my arms. I think it was the man with his face painted up as a skeleton who spiked my gin and tonic. He could have wrapped his hand around my upper arm as I unlocked my door. I try not to imagine anything. I go where I please, but I'm being hunted. I'm running as fast as I can to the end of this year. The new one trawls in like a married man and his shadow eats mine on the pavement. Veronica Lake apparently was so influential that during World War II, she had to start pinning her hair up so women's hair wouldn't get caught in the factory machines. And um, when she started doing this, accidents went down by 23%. Um, I learned that today. Supermoon. Life is full of nightmares that are enormous and dark like whales. Sometimes it's like standing at the side of the highway doing nothing. Others, it's like dodging speeding trucks. I get older, but I still get everything wrong. I still trip on my shoes and take pills I find in the carpet. I think everyone I've slept with is precious and important. I want to call them all up and hold them against my chest like a bundle of daffodils. It takes a serious heft of my self-control not to run through the streets barefoot every day or walk into the ocean and let her take me. This is how I want to die, in a boat, on fire, while Billie Holiday crawls out of a speaker. I want everyone to be watching. Platinum Blonde. On those days I get enamored with my face or an outfit. I remember the year every girl wore a garland of flowers and it became a negative thing. Everyone hates a whimsical girl. They don't find themselves funny, but men do with their plain clothes and serious thoughts. That summer I tried to be like them. I was always on my way to another funeral, clad in black and hiking boots. I made fun of the funny whimsical girls. Now I die to be with them. Sometimes I dream my eyeliner goes all the way up to my ears like spider's legs. Before prom, I glued lashes to my eyes that were heavy and forced them half shut. My brother laughed, but I didn't think it was funny. The last time my heart broke, I bleached my hair and sat in the salon chair with my scalp blistering like guilt. That night I slept alone on an empty living room floor. I can laugh about it now, but I don't think it was funny. Wayne was talking about there being a girl fight and I had to have a poem about a girl fight actually. Um, they're very terrifying to witness. If you've ever seen a girl fight, you've stared in the face of chaos. Uh, and that's why I wrote this poem called Bad Girls Club. How could you really know yourself if you'd never had that fake hair extension ripped from the back of your head in the car park of the big Tesco? Sometime in the spring of 2010, 
the scrap of synthetic lace in your thighs, already stained with blood, already too fat for your cutoffs, and a girl called Jessie, the most frightening and gorgeous being you had ever seen. I live in a place surrounded by urban foxes now. Um, I've always sort of seen them around in London, but I'm from the countryside where foxes are really looked down on and they're sort of seen as symbols of evil because they eat your chickens. Um, so I guess it's fair to have this sort of rivalry with them. But I've developed this sort of talismanic relationship with urban foxes. We're seeing them, I sort of feel a bit safer seeing them around. I don't know why. It's called fox. I'm usually hanging around in dressing gowns, buttering toast and calling a friend to complain about poetry or the government. It's a rough time to be young or to care about anything. So I keep wandering through London looking for something to do. I rattle around these streets like an urban fox in my secondhand fur, eating junk out of polystyrene. I don't like to follow that thick gray artery that leads to my flat where I live with myself. I tell myself that crying in cabs could be glamorous if I did it correctly. I am doing my best with bad nights and bad love. Honey, it's difficult. Uh, I also wrote that in 2015 and I'm still complaining about poetry in the government. <laughs> Disco. Last new moon in Scorpio, I coughed up blood. Two days later, met another man. He was so much stronger than me. Sooner or later, I pay for everything I do. My beloved will not come back anytime soon, though I carry her name like a silver dollar in my mouth. Oh, I am dying for something gold-plated, for something as old-fashioned as marriage. I wish someone would buy my shoes for me, but expect nothing else. I will not shave my legs or pretend to appreciate those TV shows where women are violently murdered. I could overlook the inconsistencies and rape scenes, but I'm in my early 20s, a party girl running low on favours. My life is already like that. I don't need to watch it on screen. Lost my poem again. Daughter. When I was young, I was so good. I was Saint Lucia, three years running. My mother crowned me with lit candles wrapped in tin foil. I couldn't protest because I was the vicar's daughter. I had to stand and proclaim my sainthood, wick straight and pray I wouldn't go up in flames. That story is actually true. We, do, we used to do a thing about Saint Lucia in the church when I was a child. Um, but it was actually kind of thrilling um, to be standing with lit candles on your head and then you had to stand there and say, I am Lucia, saint of light. And it was actually very dramatic and I quite enjoyed it. So. Thus I became a heart eater. I was holding myself like an open flame at candle mass when the donut presented itself, glossy red and obscene. The same vague heart shape of a woman's face. I ate it in three bites in the street, thinking of Valentine's Day, how every year it manages to hurt my feelings. How when I was young, I wanted to be called Valentine, the bringer of love. How I used to want a minute black heart tattooed on my buttock where only a lover could find it. And what would be the point of that now? Then I swallowed and sucked the sugar from my fingers like a disgusting child at a fair. Purple Heart. My ex's aura is bright red and mine is blue or violet or vanta black, disappearing dark and taking all the light with it. I want to call her on the phone and listen to her describe things. Beaches in Oregon, her new girlfriend on roller skates, the weather. The only way to fall out of love is to write poems like this as your heart leaks poisonly, poisonously into your chest, like hotel shampoo in a suitcase. Like you, I am wondering if I will always be like this. 
Pangea. Always breaking up, just broke up with someone, broken up about it in pieces, heartbroken. Who did it? I'll kick their teeth in. Yes, I am broken, heart aching, cutting myself, trying to pick it up. Yes, I am too much, foolish, cleaning broken glass up, wrong, broke a window trying to get into the house I used to live in. Now I have nowhere to go. Poem in which I leave and don't come back. What do I do without you? Love, I go to work. I let the hole you made in my tights with your thumbnail grow out like mold. I fold napkins, mop chemicals into ampersands on the floor. The milk jugs are my favorite. They look like miniature birds chirping against each other on the circular tray. Dropping them would be almost as bad as bursting into tears. I could break most of them in an instant. If you're a bird, then I'm one too. We can either mate for life or get sucked into a wind turbine. I think I'm probably just going to do a couple more, uh, if that's okay. Confessional. Baby, you are not always as right as you think you are, but you know I must be very hard up to want love. In this economy of shop floors and polishing dinner knives, holding their excruciating heat in a dry cloth napkin in my chapped hands, in this climate of all my not inconsiderable emotions for no money, where all my blood can buy me a yellow silk skirt, why would I ask the devil for love? Why am I trying to give away everything I have? Am I more religious than I thought? Should I go to Rome? Or worse, am I trying to disappear? Am I covering myself up with soil or strips of wallpaper? Why would I ask for love when I could curl up around a thick fur coat when, like a cat, I will curl up in warmth from just about anywhere? Why then would I ask you for love? Uh, this is one of the last poems in the collection. Um, I started moving out of the emotional space of this book as I finished writing it and now I feel very different so it's very strange when people ask me questions about it because I'm like I don't I can't remember what was going on it can't have been great <laughs> but I got this out of it so that's something is this thing on I don't want to write about death anymore I'm tired of always taking off my heels and crying on the steps outside the ballroom I want to stuff the whole sky in my mouth like an Hermes scarf like candy floss from a plastic bucket. I want to submissively drink the blood from your neck in the early evening. Gorgeous, I'm starving. Thank you so much for listening and tuning in and to everybody for organising this.